All right, there's some rumors going around. Uh, these letters here, people are commenting saying that I'm a, a virgin, okay? They think, they think that that stands for virgin. Not that there's anything wrong with that, if, you, if that's what you are, but I am not one, okay? I have a podcast called Very Really Good, okay? Very Really Good. Not a virgin. Could a virgin have a podcast? Yeah, probably, but I folks, I know I didn't do my usual extra greeting, okay? I'm gonna try to not do it one time. I'm in control here. <laughs> I know I got canceled for forgetting it last time, but you know what? This time, I'm not forgetting it. I'm purposely not doing it. So let's move forward. I had a bunch of action figures when I was a kid, and I get a lot of action now, not a virgin. The cool thing that I used to do with my, my friend when I was a kid, we would set up all of our action figures beside us when we watched the movie Small Soldiers, because we thought that would inspire our action figures to come to life. Is that adorable? Yes. Were we idiots? Absolutely. Did it work? Yes. And it's so funny looking back at that, because at the time, we thought we were like, so cool but at the same time if we saw like any of our other friends playing with like barbies we would make fun of them for sure but in reality there's obviously no difference you're all just pipsqueaks playing with puny plastic people capiche say that 10 times fast right that 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 speaking of barbies Hey, why stay on topic when you can simply not? Barbie was created by Mattel in 1959 and it became an instant success. It went on to become one of the most popular toys of all time and grossed roughly $1.3 billion in 2020 alone. They've made Barbie video games, books, clothes, YouTube channels, anything you can attach a Barbie name to, Mattel has done it. They could put out their own line of prison security products and call it Barbied Wire and it'd be adorable. For a very long time, Barbie didn't really have any competition until the year 2001 when Bratz dolls bursted onto the scene. Man, when these big-eyed gals showed up, people lost their fucking mind. There were a lot of parents who were like mad because they thought the Bratz dolls were too hot <laughs> because they like showed more skin, I guess. I don't know. And that totally makes sense, right? Dolls with big lips and big eyes. I mean, come on. That's not normal, okay? We're used to Barbie and her regular proportions, okay? And by regular proportions, I mean the uh, the body type that media has sort of guilted women into pursuing for the last, I don't know, forever. <laughs> so they can sell razors to shave their legs and tea that makes them shit, you know? Regular proportion. So maybe Bratz having big lips and eyeballs wasn't that crazy after all. Barbie looks fucking fucking weird too, man. She has no asshole. You ever think about that? How did she fart? But tell me that, huh? But yeah, put me in charge of Barbie, all right? Introducing ultra-realistic Barbie, now with functioning asshole. <laughs> oh! I'll be sitting by the phone, Mattel. Like, you think when Bratz dropped, people were like, oh, great, yet yeah, <laughs> another unrealistic beauty standard for women. Now I gotta look like this. <laughs> and also, Bratz was, like, way more inclusive of, like, different skin colors in comparison to Barbie at the time. You know, so young people of color could actually have, like, a doll that that resembled them a little bit, just in terms of like skin color, you know? And that's huge. And Bratz was crazy popular when they first came out, even outselling Barbie in the UK one year. So Barbie was absolutely shitting out of her non-existent asshole when Bratz was popping off because Mattel thought that they were just gonna take over like pretty much the entire market. Mattel actually went as far as to sue Bratz, but ultimately lost because, you know, big surprise, you can't just sue people you don't like. If that was true, I'd be sending a cease and desist to the son of a bitch who invented Mondays. <laughs> Come on. Fuck you. Bratz lost a little bit of their popularity over the years, but uh, it looks like they're trying to make a comeback based off their current website, which is very smart because I feel like, I feel like girls on TikTok look exactly like Bratz dolls. They dress like them. Like that's, and that's not a diss or anything. Like the fits go hard. I, I will admit it. But in their heyday, I think what set Bratz apart from Barbie was their animated series and movies. And I've received tons of DMs over the years asking me to make a video about a Barbie movie or a Bratz movie. So I thought a good way to structure this video is like a head to head death match. We'll watch a Barbie movie and then we'll watch a Bratz movie. We'll compare and contrast. And then we'll see once and for all, who's the better doll. Mm. There's a little bar for you. Or should I say a bar? B. <laughs> Okay. We'll start with the Barbie movie because, you know, they were the first on the scene and I guess it's only fair. The movie I picked is called Barbie as Rapunzel. Obviously, you can uh, you can roughly imagine the plot 
of Barbie as Rapunzel. But they do switch up the plot a little bit and add in some Barbie flair, which is nice. Big fan of Barbie flair. And Barbie flair. Okay. The movie starts with Barbie painting with her little sister, Kelly. And right off the bat, I gotta say, Kelly is a goddamn nightmare to look at. I'm sorry, I have to get this out of the way. I don't know the exact budget of this movie, but I wish more of it went towards reducing the size of Kelly's forehead. You could play a game of football on that thing. And it's fine that I'm making fun of this little girl's appearance, okay? She's not real. Or at least I hope. Please don't be real. So this whole movie is basically Barbie like telling Kelly the story of Rapunzel. So she goes on to explain how there was a beautiful girl with long ass hair named Rapunzel who lives in this tall tower with this old witch named Gothel. And she has to pretty much do everything for her. She also has a dragon friend named Penelope and a little British rabbit friend named Hobie and Rapunzel's favorite thing to do is paint. But this Gothel lady, she does not like that because she is mean. Did you make the beds, sweep the floors, weed the garden? You're supposed to keep the house in perfect order. I didn't know about- It's your job to know. Oh yeah, also Gothel has this like pet weasel that sort of hangs around her neck and he seems, I don't know the word for it, horny, <laughs> I guess. Oh, allow me, mistress. <laughs> Yeah. Could you imagine like working in the studio while the voice actor did the voice for this weasel? Okay, we're gonna do the line one more time. Just say it normal. Allow me, mistress. That's it. Say it normal. Okay, fine. Okay, thank you. Oh, allow me, mistress. <laughs> Come on, dude. Oh, are you hard? <laughs> He's so hard right now. Okay, back to it. One night when Gothel goes for a nap, Rapunzel and friends find a secret entrance to the basement where they find some of Gothel's old belongings. I can't imagine Gothel attending all these balls. Curtis, just move on. You don't have to make a joke about it. You're 27 years old. She obviously meant balls. Like, you know, balls. a dance, like a, like a party, not testicles. You can move past this. You don't have to make a joke. What was on that scroll? Was it just a bunch of drawings of balls? Medieval times, they couldn't send dick pics, so they had to send... <laughs> Ball scrolls. Scrotum scrolls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I'm talking about dicks and balls way too much for a Barbie movie, so let's get back to it. So when they're in the basement, they also find an old hairbrush that's from Rapunzel's parents, uh, which is weird to Rapunzel because Gothel told her she was abandoned when she was just a few days old. Why would she lie to her about that? Why would she lie to me about that? That's what I'm saying! They also end up finding a secret tunnel out of the castle into a nearby village where she stumbles upon some cute kids riding on a horse and oh my god, it's fucking Kelly. Never mind. Even in Barbie's telling of Rapunzel, this is a fantasy world, anything can happen. This was your one chance for Kelly to not look like what stubbing your toe feels like and you didn't do a damn thing. Jesus Christ. Well, at least the other kids look normal. <laughs> oh, never mind. They're all freaks. I think I might just hate kids. Anyways, back to the movie. Kelly falls into a big hole and they unfortunately save her life with the help of a man named Stefan. And he's the love interest, obviously, because look at him. He's so hot. <laughs> this is also where we find out that the kingdom that they are in right now is having a feud with a neighboring kingdom. The other kingdom is run by this guy named Wilhelm. Wilhelm claims our king did something terrible to him years ago. Oh, but we don't know what that thing was. Yet. Do you live in Wilhelm's kingdom? Who's he? The king who ordered that. This Wilhelm guy seems pretty awesome if he's making holes that Kelly falls into. Am I right, guys? Yes. yes. Thank you. I'll be right back. Okay, so after Stefan runs away for no reason, Puzzle realizes how late it's getting and heads back to the castle, but uh-oh, horniest weasel in the world is following her. <laughs> Man, I cannot get over this weasel. I saw this movie days ago and I cannot stop thinking about him. Could you imagine if the animal sidekicks in other movies were just, just fucking horny all the time? Like if Harry Potter's owl, Hedwig. Do, do owls get horny? I don't know. I mean, there's like horned owls. I guess we would never know if an owl was horny. This is my impression of Hedwig when he asks another owl for oral uh, pleasure, but that other owl refuses. So no Hedwig. Back to the movie. Gothel finds out that Rapunzel went to the village. So she's like super grounded now and has to stay in the tower. So this next part is like a dream sequence where they do the iconic Rapunzel scene, you know, where the guy milks a cow, I guess. <laughs> Fuck. Climbs up the hair. Climbs up the tower on, on her hair. Jesus Christ. All right, this is a, I got a bone to pick with Rapunzel, wouldn't this fucking hurt so much? I always think about that whenever I saw anything Rapunzel related. It's always Rapunzel just like relaxing, chilling at the top of the tower, 
while like some 200 pound guy is like pulling on her hair. I know human hair can be pretty strong, but like that would, that would still do a number on your neck, I think. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. All right, I don't really know why I'm doing this, but I trust you. Here I come. Wait, what? Ah, what the fuck, dude? I'll be up there soon, my love. Dude, seriously, what the fuck are you doing? Ow, stop. Doth thou carpets match thy drapes? Dude, stop, seriously, stop, whoa. whoa. Oh my god. Rapunzel is bald now. So the next day, Hobie and Penelope, the dragon who can fly up really high, they try to think of a way that they can get Rapunzel out of the tower that's up really high. Uh, and they don't think of an idea. So that night, there's like a magic spell that turns Rapunzel's hairbrush into a magic paintbrush that then lets her travel to whichever location she paints. Sort of like a, sort of like a chalk zone type thing. You guys remember that show? Chalk zone! Chalk zone? Does it help if I say the name again? So now Rapunzel has a new way to escape the tower. So she does. That's pretty great. But she does go back. I have to go. I'll see you tonight. Uh, but hey, at least we get this scene. You're useless. Give him to me. Uh, I'll leave you the lucky rabbit's feet. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, if Gothel ever picked the, the weasel off of her shoulder, it would make this sound. And there'd be a huge stain right there. <laughs> That's so gross. Okay, so this next scene is pretty gnarly. Gothel chops off Rapunzel's hair, so... Rapunzel is bald now. Not actually, but she has just like shorter hair now. And then Gothel puts this super crazy unbreakable spell on the tower so Rapunzel can never leave. Never release your prisoner with a lying heart. But quick question. If you didn't want Rapunzel to leave, why not just do that spell in the first place? I'm not gonna do the one thing that will easily solve all my problems until I absolutely have to. That is weasel cum. Okay, guys, we're getting close to the end. Back at the villas, they're having this huge ball. Balls. Everybody's there. You know, you got the king, Stefan. I don't know anybody else's name. Then Gothel shows up and starts chasing after Stefan in the most awkward scene ever because there's just no music. <laughs> Nobody hurts my brother. Ah! Okay, the beginning of the movie said like they had like an orchestra performing the music for this movie. Where is it? If you're gonna have a chase scene, it can't just be like just footsteps only, right? Not the same, right? And this next part pissed me off so much. So back at the tower, Penelope realizes that uh, the spell only works on someone who has a lying heart. But Rapunzel never lied. You haven't been lying to Gothel. So Penelope thinks that Rapunzel can just leave whenever she wants. Gothel's spell can't stop you. So she just leaves the tower. <sighs> You're telling me. If Rapunzel just tried once to leave the tower, she would have escaped. What the fuck, Rapunzel? That's like if someone pushed you into a pool as a prank and then you just went limp and drowned. Like, try a little bit, you know? But anyways, she escapes the tower and flies away on Penelope's back. And again, why didn't you fucking do this years ago? Folks, now it's time for the big climax. And it's not from the weasel, don't worry. Uh -huh. Back at the ball, Balls. Wilhelm, the other king, shows up and starts fighting the main king. And this is where we find out that Wilhelm is mad because he thinks the king stole his daughter from him. <gasps> you guys putting the pieces together? You stole my daughter? No! For the thousandth time, I never stole her! Then Gothel shows up and reveals that it was her who stole his daughter from him. What? Because she was actually in love with Wilhelm, he wasn't in love with her. So yeah, Gothel's just a big, big old simp. That's her motivation. She would have been my daughter if you had married me. I don't know if it works like that, all right. Anyways, there's another chase scene, and Rapunzel pulls a fast one and paints a picture of the tower, and Gothel walks into it, so she's transported inside and is trapped in the tower forever. No! So now it's time for the big happy ending. Aw. I thought you were gone forever. Aw. I've wronged you all these years. Aw. Ah! So that's Barbie as Rapunzel. I'm gonna save my final thoughts 
of it uh, for the end of the video because we're only halfway done, guys. This is a double feature, remember? So if you want to go, you know, grab a water or a snack for the, the last half, that's totally cool. While we, while the other people wait, uh, let's talk about the new merch I just put out. It's the Curtis Town Cowboys collection. We got t-shirts, we got hoodies, we got sweatpants. We got a full sweatsuit, dude, It's and it looks great. Super cozy, great stuff, designed by Kel Lauren again, and I'm just super hyped on it. So go check it out, curtisconnor.com. Thanks. Thanks so much. Hey, it's Bratz time. Let's all get Kelly out of our heads and um, let's move on to a movie called Bratz Fashion Pixies. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Here's here's one. I used to work at a blanket factory, but the factory folded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 20 seconds in. We're already off to a, a great start. Barbie is not looking good. So the main characters of this movie are these two sisters uh, named Cymbeline and Brianna. One night, Cymbeline starts acting really weird and sneaky sneaks out of the house so Brianna follows her and witnesses her fly away with this big red light in the sky. So, (laughs) something's up. The next day at school, this is where we meet some of the other main characters. Uh, First up, we got Dylan. And you remember how I said uh, girls on TikTok look like Bratz dolls? Look at this fucking guy, dude. Dylan walks so e-boys could run their fingers through their hair. If there's a scene of Dylan going like... I will not be surprised. But this Dylan guy is supposed to be like a ladies man, I guess. He's always hitting on girls and stuff. He's essentially the horny weasel of this movie. (laughs) Every movie needs a horny weasel. That's gotta be an Oscar category. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the final award of the night. Horniest weasel. Uh, Good luck to all the nominees. All right, let's take a look. Fucking weasel from that goddamn Barbie movie again. Every, every year. Can we get someone else? How about me? I'm a horny weasel, come on. And also there's this new girl who shows up. Her name is Lena. This is Lena. She's a transfer student. Who's got something to do with Cymbeline based on this exchange. So after class, Dylan's backpack is stolen by a crow, naturally. So he goes in this epic chase scene on his motorcycle and this one actually has music. So Dylan ends up crashing his motorcycle, and it's heavily implied that the crow was actually the new girl, Lena. Missing something. Uh, my backpack. And this Lena girl is up to no good because Dylan is then put into an episode of So You Think You Can Trance, okay? He just cannot stop dancing. It's like he's like under a spell or something. Where's it coming from? And they say white people have no rhythm. Show them that. Next time anyone says that, show them that to confirm it. So that same night, Cymbeline's friends sneak into her house to see why she's acting so weird, and they're very sneaky about it. A lot of people don't know this, but if you're trying to be quiet, you can run as loud as you want, but as long as you tiptoe at the very end, nobody will hear a thing. And folks, this is where we find out Cymbeline's big secret. I don't know what that means in the context of this film. She's a pixie. Okay, that doesn't help. Okay, also this next scene, dude, it's genuinely the scariest scene I've ever seen in my life. You know, it's time you nosy Colleen. He's got yourselves a million miles away from here. Whoa! Don't you know when you're not wanted, huh? Go on, go away with you. Skedaddle. What would your man think if we cut the likes of you? Not fairy people on the premises. There's something to be said about being chased by something really big. Like, I feel like you know what's going to happen if a giant garden gnome was chasing you. You know what's going to happen if they catch up. Like, what's a little one going to do? Do I want to know? Should the rest of this video just be an apology for that? I didn't mean it, I'm desperate. So the next day, Brianna and friends go into the forest to see what's going on with Lena and Cymbeline. This is where they find Dylan just absolutely busting a move. He then runs away, Stefan style. So they follow him when they are then ambushed by some evil pixies, Uh uh-oh. And also, Cymbeline is one of them. Cymbeline, what are you doing here? What's going on? Oh, you'll find out. It is really nice of them to say that. I'll I'll admit it. Don't worry, if you keep watching the movie, 
You'll learn more as the plot develops. So Brianna's friends get kidnapped by the Pixies and Dylan twerks about it, which is honestly a, a power move. Absolute power move. Body, yaddy, yaddy. So the next day, uh, Brianna's friends stumble upon Brianna. She's crying under a tree. And this is where we find out what happened to Cymbeline and Brianna's mother, even though it was never really mentioned in the plot up until right now. But apparently when they were kids, there was a big snowstorm. Their mom gave them like a special magic wand and then she just disappeared forever. The more I watch this movie, the more I realize like the similarities it has to Barbie as Rapunzel, which is really weird because it's just like, these are just like random movies that were just sent to me. There's missing parents in both films, magic items that were left for the abandoned kids, small scary beings and horny weasels also every time i say horny weasel i want to say sigourney weaver horny weasel sigourney weaver it sounds sigourney weaver is a horny weasel all right so this next part is wild this is where we find out brianna and cymbeline are pixies like good pixies disguised as human and their dad is actually the pixie king it's another thing there's kings in both movies so brianna gives uh, her friends some special glasses that allows them to see that the pixie world coexist with the human world. Okay, I don't want to take this too literally, but I'm going to. Are they saying that all fire hydrants are just little garden gnomes in disguise? If so... Some fireman slapping a hose on a gnome's pole, and he's just pissing the fire out. That scene with the gnome earlier is so much scarier now that we know what they are actually capable of. Just picture a tiny gnome just running at you like, I'm gonna piss on you! Okay, so now the gang heads back into the forest to break into this big pixie party that they're having so they can rescue Cymbeline and her friends who were kidnapped. And dude, I gotta admit, this party that they're having, it looks fucking lit. <laughs> Dude, the split second shot that they keep showing of that girl just angrily twerking. Holy shit, dude. That is so funny to me. Someone twerking, but they're pissed off. Hey, you have to shake that ass, girl. Hell yeah. You all right? This is not usually the expression that... Okay. Okay, so they see that their friends are in the dance trance, so Brianna tries to set them free. And this is just not realistic, okay? If there was a huge rave going on, and then a bunch of powder just started falling from the sky, people would be trying to catch it with their nose, dude. Like a, like a kid trying to catch a snowflake on their tongue. Except it's not snow, it's... Snow. And instead of their tongue getting cold, their tongue would get tired from fucking talking too much. I can believe literally everything else in this movie, but this part, it's just ridiculous. But anyways, back to the film. While that big rave was going on, there's another ball Balls. happening outside of the school, and this is where the final showdown takes place. After they play a knockoff of the Arthur theme song, of course. Everybody has a part to play. I mean, come on. Everybody Everybody has has a walking down play. the street. So at this ball, the evil pixies show up and terrorize everybody. And this part really confuses me because like, I thought humans couldn't see pixies, right? That's why they had that whole scene with the special glasses so you could see the pixies. So why are people like reacting like they can see them? And okay, they're, they're all dancing now. All right, fine. That's the next TikTok dance. You gotta dance like a Bratz character. All right, now it's time for the big climax. Hi, I'm Mel. Lena, I banished you eternally. Oh, come on, <laughs> I banished you eternally. Okay, so all hell is breaking loose, but this is when we finally get to see what the dad looks like when he transforms into the Pixie King. Oh, oh no, he's not. not. Okay, guys, you ready for the freaking curveball? This is where Lena reveals that she's actually the one who made Cymbeline 
and Brianna's mom disappeared 10 years ago. My wife? You don't think that blizzard came from nowhere. And she did this because the king banished her. After your husband banished me, that man has simply got to go. But I mean, if she's banished, then how is she able to like just freely roam around and cast spells on people? I don't Fuck it, dude, let's dance. Oh, yeah. The way Lena got rid of their mom all those years ago is she turned her into a tree. The same tree that Brianna was crying under earlier in the movie. So there's a big pixie fight, and when all hope is lost, Brianna and friends pull up on some flying unicorns to save the day. And let's see what they have to say for themselves. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, man. I'm not gonna lie, this is me when I'm a gnome pissing out a fire. So the girls show up and defeat Lena, and with the power of friendship, they're able to bring back their mother who disappeared 10 years ago. Well done, my daughters. And I gotta say, for someone who is just a tree for the past 10 years, she's a surprisingly chipper. Wood chipper. Seriously though, if I was a tree for 10 years, my first words wouldn't be, well, well done, done, my, my daughters. daughters. You know, I don't, I don't have any daughters. But hey, now the family lives happily ever after. <laughs> Gross. All right, that's Bratz Fashion Pixies. And now we've seen a movie from each doll company. There's been 38 Barbie movies and 13 Bratz movies, but I think one of each is enough. With the Barbie movie, I liked... Oh, what did I like? <laughs> oh, I liked the one fight scene between the, the two kings. The animation was pretty good at that part. I mean, I didn't think I even talked about that in, this, in the video. Fuck. Oh, going into the paintings reminded me of Super Mario 64, so there's that. And I like how they switched up the story a little bit, so four out of 10. For the Bratz movie, I like the first line of the film. I like the music, I love the aesthetic. You know, you got the hot pixie king dad, and Kelly wasn't in it. So, 10 out of 10. Fuck you, Kelly! Okay, sorry to all my Barbie heads out there, but looks like Bratz is the winner. And Mattel, please don't sue me for saying that. You can take the Barbie asshole idea. Call it even. Balls! I don't think there's any way to segue from that. So, how about we hear a word from today's sponsor, Curran. Folks, banks are weird. Even when I was allowed to freely leave my house, I would do anything I could to not go to my bank. It's confusing, stressful, and they always make things way harder than they need to be. But Current is the future of banking. They don't hide information like traditional financial institutions. Current keeps it simple, authentic, and direct. No hidden fees, no hidden anything, actually. They have tons of incredible benefits and services, but the best part, everything can be done online. No more walking into a silly old bank. Okay, and you can take that to the bank. Or don't, because... You don't need to anymore. And also, dude, to make things even cooler, Curran and I are giving away five big ones. It's really vague. Curran and I are giving away $5,000. All you have to do is click the link in my description and sign up for Curran using the code Curtis, and we will send 10 random people $500. Super quick and easy. You can sign up in less than two minutes. So what are you waiting for? Again, click the link in my description. Sign up for Current using code Curtis and enjoy the future of banking. And you'll also have the chance to be one of the 10 lucky people who get 500 smackaroos. All right, thanks again to Current for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys check them out because it helps me out a bunch when you guys check out the sponsors. So everybody wins, dude. So yeah, thank you, Current. Back to me. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please press that like button. It means a lot. And also, believe it or not, one like equals one hole that I will dig uh, so Kelly can fall into it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this and more movie reviews. It's always a good time. Press the subscribe button because as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Curtis Town. If you didn't know, Curtis Town is the best place to live in the world. And I am the mayor of Curtis Town, so you have to be nice to me. It's the law. You can check the description for the things I do. I got Instagram, Twitter, my Twitch, my gaming channel, my podcast. And yeah, that's it. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. Hope you had fun. Hope you laughed. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace out.